Hi everyone, welcome back to Kidding Around. My name is Melanie Smith and I think it is thoroughly thrilling that you are here with me today on another Thoughtful Thursday. Today we will be making this awesome flag pin that you can give to someone special in your life. Before we do that though, if you like what you're seeing here and want to follow along with all of Kidding Around's videos, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Below each video, click the thumbs up. And also, if you really like what you're doing here, please share us with your friends. Thank you so much. All right, well, let's move on and talk about this really cool flag pin. You know, according to my holiday a day calendar, today is Hug a GI Day. Do you know what a GI is? The initials GI are used to describe the soldiers of the United States Army and the airmen and women of the United States Air Force. So when I say hug a GI, I mean hug a soldier, or possibly hug someone who used to be a soldier who is now known as a veteran. But I know that right now, hugging can be a little bit tricky sometimes. So if you are unable to actually physically wrap your arms around your favorite soldier or veteran, I thought that it might be nice to send them a pin of the flag of the country that they served. This way, when you send this, they will know, even though you can't actually physically hug them, or even if you can, they will know that you are sending your love and your care to them. So in order to make this flag, you will need just a couple supplies. You will need small pony beads in the colors of red, white, and blue. If you don't have any of these small pony beads, there is a link below this video where you can purchase some. And then the other thing that you will need are nine large safety pins. Now, if you look at these safety pins, you might notice they look a little different than the ones that you use at home. They are missing a circle down here at the bottom or a coil. That coil actually makes the safety pins a little bit sturdier and it is definitely useful if you are trying to pin two things together. Because we're not trying to pin two things together, we are going to be using coilless safety pins because it allows the beads to flow around a little bit and kind of look like that flag is flying as someone is wearing it and those beads are kind of moving around. I, the coiled ones may work. You can go ahead and try those, but I would definitely recommend using the coilless ones. And if you don't have any of these at home, there's a link below this video where you can purchase these as well. All right, so let's get started. So. If you look at this flag, you will notice a few things. You will notice that we have used dots of color and we've connected those dots of color to form designs. So these dots, these blue dots, we have put together and they form a rectangle. And the red and white dots or beads we've put next to each other to make them form stripes. So that's kind of fun. That's actually a kind of art that's called pointillism because you see lots of little points and they form a picture when they get put next to each other. All right, the other thing that I want you to see or that I want you to know is that we are going to be building this flag from the top down, from the left to the right, but we are going to uh, be putting the blue, which is on the top of the flag, on our pin first, which will make it actually fall to the bottom. So our flag stripes are going to look upside down until we turn them over and hang them on our pin. All right, so we are going to go ahead and get started and we are going to be putting five blue beads on our first four pins. Now, of course, safety pins are safety pins for a reason. Uh, the safety part, make sure that you hide that sharp pin away from you so you don't accidentally poke yourself. So be very careful when you're using these and make sure that you are keeping that point away from your fingers and your skin. All right, so let's go ahead and we will put five blue beads on our first pin here. Whoops, <laughs> they can get away from you if you're not careful. All right, so I am putting five beads on my first pin and you'll see that those beads are coming down around the bend of the pin. Totally fine, not a problem. You'll be able to work that out a little later. All right, and then we are going to put a white 
bead on, the first stripe below the blue rectangle on our flag is white. And then we're going to put red on, and then we're going to put another white and a red, and then we will be finishing with a white. Now, unfortunately, the size of these beads and the size of these pins makes it so that we can't finish with our red stripe. The flag actually starts at the top with a red stripe and has a red stripe at the bottom. Uh, we can't, we don't have room to put that red stripe in here, but I am sure that anyone who sees this will see it as an American flag and appreciate and understand the constraints of our craft materials. All right, so once we now have our five blue beads and then our three white beads and our two red beads alternating, we are going to carefully close our first pin and then we are going to move it so that the clasp is at the bottom and those blue beads now are at the top. So you can see this is our first row and we are going to go ahead and start our flag. We're going to very carefully open another safety pin and then we are going to put that safety pin through the pin so that first pin with the beads hangs on the safety pin. Now I'm just going to put that aside and I'm going to leave it open just because that makes it a little easier. Of course, if that open pin concerns you, feel free to close it and then we'll just open it. You can just open it every time we put a pin on. All right, so we are going to move on to our second row and we are going to do the exact same thing that we did with our first row. So we're going to first put our five beads on here and five blue beads, I should say. And then we will do our white and our red and our white and our red and then we will finish with our white and then we're going to close it and flip it over just the way we did with our first one and then with the bead side facing forward I'm going to slip it onto that open safety pin and now we have the first two pins done. All right, and then we just do our third and fourth ones the same way that we've been doing our first and second ones. So we do five blue beads, and then we will alternate red and white, or white and red, I should say, right? White, red, white, red, uh, white. <laughs> That's known as an A-B pattern. So the white becomes the A. Oh, look, I just messed that up. I'm talking and I can't do two things at once. So uh, the white is the A and the red is the B. So it goes white, red, white, red, white. So this is A, B, A, B, A. You'll hear that a ref references to A, B patterns if you haven't already. All right, so I flipped it over, put the beads on the front, and then I am sliding it on. Now, again, if your beads kind of slide back over that bump, don't worry about it. You can fix it in the end. All right, now we are going to do our last, uh, our last pin with the blue on it. Now, as I mentioned, this is not actually an accurate flag. Our flag has 13 stripes on it, and this one does not. We only have 10 stripes on this one. Um, but again, people absolutely will understand what it is and what it looks like. It is a great representation. And again, I put a red bead on the end. What am I doing? <laughs> All right, so I now have my fourth bead, or my fourth pin with my beads on it, and I have slid it on. Now we are going to go to these red and white uh, pins, no blue in them, so we're going to go ahead and move that aside, and we are still building from the top down, so we are going to start with our red beads. So here we go. We're going to do 10 beads, so 5 red and 5 white, and we are going to alternate them. I have to say, even if you're watching this not on Hug a GI Day, and man, I hope you're watching me. I hope you're making sure that I am doing this right. <laughs> um, anyway, I have to say, if we're not, if you're not watching this on Hug a GI Day, you could absolutely use this for Veterans Day or Memorial Day, or you know what, just any other day that you want to say thank you to someone who served their country and who helped to keep us safe. All right, let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> I can't count and talk at the same time. Hopefully you're having a little bit better luck than I am. All right, so I have my first red and white uh, pin done, and now I am going to just slide it on. 
I, you know, I turned it over just the same way I did these other four. I turned it and um, I made sure that I had my beads on and that the pin was closed before I did that. All right. You know, something else that you could do if you wanted to, when you gave your favorite uh, soldier or veteran this pin, is that you could send a card or you could make them a card. I'm sure that they would love to get a card from you that says thank you for your service. Uh, soldiers and veterans do so much important stuff for all of us and I'm sure that they liked being thanked, don't you think? All right, I am almost done here. I am going to do eight of these red and white pins because though that's the number that seems to fit well on my pins. Of course, if you have bigger or smaller pins, you can adjust the numbers of your uh, beads as necessary and your pins too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm, you know what? I think that I have done something wrong. Here I go again, talking. All right, let me see how many beads I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I missed my 10th bead. <laughs> All right, so hopefully, like I said, you are having better luck than I am at getting the right number of beads in the right patterns. I'm sure that you are doing a better job than I am. All right, so let me see where I am here now. Okay, I'm going to open this and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I still need two more beads on here. But you know, the nice thing about this is if you make a mistake just like I did, it's so easy to fix. All right, so now I have the right number of beads in the right pattern and I have closed it and now I am sliding it on that pin that will hold my flag together and also allow me to put the, um, the actual pin on my shirt or it would allow the soldier to put their pin on their shirt. All right, so I have now my last one, red, white, red. Okay, that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, <laughs> ten. Phew, that was harder than it looked, <laughs> but I'm sure it won't be for you. Okay, so now I close my pin and I am moving all the beads to the front and I am putting it on this final pin. And now I can close that top pin and I have this beautiful flag, or at least I will once I can get all of these beads back to the front. Like I said, those beads kind of have a mind of their own and they like to travel around. Um, especially if you have put your flag on the table as you're making it, the beads may have kind of wandered over that hump, but no big deal. You just take a couple minutes and slide them back to the front, just like I did there. Oh, I still have one lonely bead. All right, there we go. And then I turn it around to the front, and there I have this amazing flag that someone I'm sure would love to wear on their coat or on their shirt. You know, I can definitely see how nice it would be if you made that card for your soldier or your veteran, the card that says thank you for your service on the front. If you pinned this into the back of the card, they would be so surprised to open it and see this lovely gift that you are giving them. So they see thank you on the front, you, they open the card and they see this great pin that they can wear to remind themselves that you are thinking of them and you care a great deal for them. I am sure they would consider themselves hugged at that point. I would love to see pictures of your flag pins. Please ask a grown-up to take a picture of yours and put that on our Facebook site. I so love that you are so interested in spreading happiness and kindness around the world. Well, I look forward to seeing you on Saturday for our wonderful woman video. It's a good one. I can't wait to see you then. But until then, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for spreading love around the world. Thanks for kidding around with me. I will see you next time.